Listen, uh, I've, I've gathered you all here today. <laughs> You're fired. Now, listen, this has been something I just pulled you. <laughs> I'm trying to do some comedy for you, everybody. Well, listen, let me first say thank you very much um, for having us. It's been an absolutely wonderful weekend. Met incredible people. Um, was on some fun panels and stuff, and it was, you know, it was just a great, great time. Um, so, you know, thanks to Toten for getting us out here, to Lithy, um, of course, to our liaison, um, the great Jessica, um, and tons of other people. I can't remember everybody's name. I've met so many people over the weekend, um, but it's been an absolute thrill. So thank you for having us, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to come back next year. So thank you. You guys are the best. So we're Media Lair Sounds, and we're recording with the Blind Film Critic team live at PenguaCon. Oh, you're fantastic. Yes. No, that's good. That Laugh as people. much as you want. No, I want you to drown us out. Yeah. It makes us makes us sound funnier. <laughs> so okay, so this is the taping of Media Litter Sandwich, and with me are my normal hosts, Mark Monster, and then we have uh, William from All About William. Hello. And we have very special guests with us. We, uh, we're actually recording at PenguaCon with two of the guests of honors, Tommy Edison and Ben Churchill from the Blind Film Critic and a few other things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, it's great to be here. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> So, so just real quick, can you tell us what you guys guys do? Sure. Um, so I'm Tommy Edison. I'm from the. I, we have two YouTube channels. I do. Uh, one of them is called the Blind Film Critic Channel, where I review movies from my point of view as a blind person. Uh, and the other channel is called the Tommy Edison XP Channel. And that channel, I answer your questions about blindness, how I use technology, all sorts of different things. Right. And I, I'm basically a producer, director, editor, and I shoot everything that Tommy just talked about. Uh, on both YouTube channels, and I'm also a documentary filmmaker. Very cool. I mean, now, doc <laughs> you know what? Having all the cameras for me, I don't really get too messed up, but when I look and see myself on a totally different angle that I don't expect, that's what gets me. <laughs> um, and the funny thing is, Tommy, I'd assume you wouldn't be camera shy, and I heard you telling a story earlier about being camera shy. Yeah, I was very camera shy. When I, um, when I was a kid, I never liked being in front of the camera because I didn't really know what it was. And I'd always heard that, you know, the camera never lies, all these kinds of things. The camera's always watching, this, you know. Um, and so I was very intimidated by it. And then I started to work with, with Ben over here, and, um, you know, it all just went away. One of the things I noticed was, like, sighted people can look. While, they, while they're on camera and see the camera and see the lights and see all the stuff. Whereas I don't see all that. So once I get into it, I forget what I'm doing. Um, and so as a result, now I'm very comfortable in front of camera. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure what you guys would like to ask Tommy, but I'm always the most interested about the, about the film critic channel. I know your Tommy experience channel is, you know, is just doing amazing and it's all very personal, uh, but for a film side, your reviews are amazing. Wow, that's so nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, so what I do is I talk about the movies from how they how they occur to me. So I'm listening to the story, I'm listening to the acting, the music, all the sounds, everything. But I'm just not watching it. That's all. That's the only difference. <laughs> and, you know, a good movie is a good movie, right? Whether or not you can see it, I think. You know, because if it's a good story, if it's a powerful story, it's gonna work whether your eyes are open or closed. One of my favorite movies of all times is Goodfellas. And I insist that like if you fell for the moon and never saw Goodfellas before, I could just put the audio on for that and you'd be absolutely compelled for the first second. You know, I, one of my favorite movies is Fight Club and you did a great review of Fight Club oh, and I didn't think you were gonna like it as much because all the of all the action on the screen. Yeah, but you know, one of the, one, one of the tricks that happens in movies is that a lot of times when there's a lot of action going on, after that scene, the characters will talk about what just happened. So that's how I can catch up a little bit. It's, it's a weird little thing, but it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys have anything to add? Yeah. Is, are there any particular sounds in a film 
that um, move you? Like, say, for example, to move you to a positive or negative review. Well, I don't know if it would be a positive or negative review, but you know, there are certain movies that just sound amazing. As I always talk about this movie from a bunch of years ago called The Gray with Liam Neeson. And the audio in that was so breathtaking. It was, it was like I felt like the rain was all around me. Um, in the Tarzan movie from, from 2016, when, when, when the gorillas are swinging their arms and stuff, you could just hear, hear it go right across the theater. It's you know so I love that kind of stuff when they, when you know when the audio design is not uh, forgotten, it's it's very incredible. Okay, so you brought up the new Tarzan. I love the new Tarzan movie, I, and and I think a lot of the recent Tarzan movies really fell short ex- up until this one. But I also love the really old ones. Uh, oh, Johnny the- Weissmiller. I'm sorry, but Johnny Weissmiller will always be Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> How do you feel they compare to Johnny Weissmiller? I'm going to pair to, you know, uh, let's say not, maybe not from his first one, but from Tarzan and his mate, since to me, that's the staple of a Tarzan movie. See, I have to be honest. I've never really watched the old ones because it, it, you know, it never really did anything for me. Um, but, you know, the one from this summer was amazing. Margot Robbie was a lot of fun. Of course, Samuel L. Jackson um, it, you know, was a great cast. So, you know, and they did a nice job telling the story. And again, this the audio the sound design in that was just breathtaking it sounded so so good and all the music was just right and it really helped to propel the story along too yeah the only thing that was disappointing about that film i thought was uh christoph waltz role yep, absolutely right he, i wasn't he wasn't i wasn't afraid of christoph waltz as being the villain nope didn't yeah. freak me out at all. He, even though he's a great actor and you would expect that from him it was just the way it was written it was yep. like i'm not afraid of this guy i don't really care yep I wasn't invested. No. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, okay, so Tarzan, we had our talk about Tarzan there. How about sci-fi? When, when you think of science fiction movies, which ones, name three that truly move you. I, you know, I'm not a, a great big sci-fi guy, although I will say this. I love Star Trek. I love the originals of Bill Shatner, and I like the Next Generation stuff. Um, the, you know, the new ones that they've done, the um, you know, f- from the past couple of years, are okay. But I feel like the story is a little bit out of order. You know what I mean? I feel like it's it just doesn't feel right to me. Um, you know that like Leonard Nimoy was in you know what in the in the first one. And I said, how can that be? It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but you know the and the and the Star Trek movies, of course. You know the the original six. You know, you know how it is. The even ones are much better than the odd ones, right? Two, four, and six are great. One, three, and five, not so much. Okay, so, you know, how you review the movies. I know you go and you watch it without audio assist. Um, for those that don't know audio assist, some movies on DVDs will actually have someone describing the action. Um, best example, that go watch Deadpool with the audio assist on. That, that's always my go-to. If you want to see how it is and you want to laugh at it, Deadpool is the one. Thank you again, Ben, for pointing that out to me. You actually posted on your Facebook. You need to watch this intro with the audio assist. Right, because it describes what's happening in that slow-mo uh, opening sequence. Mm-hmm. And it also tells you the credits of the film at the same time. So you watch the movie without the audio assist. Right. And then Ben clears things up for you if you have any questions. Yeah, well, after the movie, you know how it is. When you go to the movie with your friends okay. and stuff, you, you talk after you, right. you know, walk out of the theater and stuff. So, for example, if there's a movie where I had to do a little bit of, you know, there wasn't enough dialogue for me, I have to guess and see if, you know, so I'll compare what I thought happened to what actually happened with Ben. Um, And then we go back and we shoot the review and we have an interesting um, grading system for the movies. Um, So, you know, it's one out of one to four eyes open. And I chose that because if you're sighted and when you're, you know, when you're, when you have glasses as a kid, Kids are rotten, and they call you four eyes. So I figured that's as many eyes as a human could have. So, and I don't have any. So I mean, I do, but they don't work. Um, so that that's a grading system. You know, one out of one, two, three, or four out of four eyes open. Okay. So I I, I am curious to how much uh, when you're discussing. You both have backgrounds in broadcasting. I know Ben, you have more of a background with, with documentary. You know, very more more of a run and gun type feel. I assume. Um, how does that impact the reviews, if at all? Well, I think it's uh, the, the way they're, for one, the way they're formatted. I did, I did work in radio for 10 years. That's how Tommy and I met um, uh, about 20 years ago. So, 
Yeah, it's part part of it's just the format, creating a, a focused, uh, outlined format, uh, which is we pull from our days in broadcasting on radio. Uh, being uh, uh, efficient with your words, getting to the point, don't repeat yourself, yeah. uh, things like that. I mean, just being concise and to the point. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and open this up to some questions since we have a live audience, so we might as well. <laughs> yes. I haven't actually watched your videos, although I'm looking forward to. Do you ever watch the movies with director commentary? No. Uh-uh. We, so we go to the theater and watch them. So what we'll do is we'll review things, um, you know, when they come out. And we'll try and pick the, you know, some of the bigger ones of the week. So that, um, you know, because, you know, we're trying to reach an audience as well. So we're trying to review the things that we think people are going to be most interested in. Um, but I, 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 in fact, I've never seen things with, with the director commentary. I'd like to. Um, but one of the problems with DVD is that I can't really navigate the menus terribly well. Um, they're not very accessible, so I can't really get to that stuff. But I have to watch some of that with you one time. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I mean, aside from the reviews, I watch those all the time. Yeah, he watches. I love director commentaries. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I it does bring to another interesting question. Uh, have you watched like when move uh, movies get riffed, like Mystery Science Three Thousand? Sure, I used to like that show a lot. Um, you know, it was and those guys were good. And I guess in the early days of that show, it was all sort of um, all sort of improv, wasn't it? Um, so I think the super early days, the when there was a pub, uh, when when it was on a public cable station, yeah. the K whatever days, yeah, it was improv, and now it's not at all. I think in their by their second season when they were picked up, they stopped doing that. Yeah, they still do it. Do they? Yeah, they actually do. Uh, I found them on Twitter, and they're still doing. It. I think they do sometimes they do live shows, but I know that they <laughs> yeah. they'll I do know it for Kurt. The live shows they have their script right in front of them. Okay, and I, they also do it for, from my understanding, for Kurt films. So they'll, they'll do is like record an audio track that you just sync up with your with the movie. Right, riff tracks oh, wow. is amazing. Right, riff tracks. <laughs> right, so That's some cool. of the same guys, right? Yeah. Um, well, MST3K is back, and it's more of the original writers and new writers, but I don't think they overlap okay. too much. They cross-promote all the time. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what it is. So some great commentaries. Uh, Boogie Nights is a great commentary. Uh, the, every, so there's a movie called um, uh, I'm Still Here, which is the Joaquin Phoenix losing his mind doc, oh, doc, documentary yeah. type story. And they, the, the commentary for that was better than the movie. Because they, ben, uh, Casey Affleck, who directed it, gave commentary about what they were doing while they were making the film and the effect the film had on them and on the audience and any backlash. It was actually more interesting than the film itself. And I almost wish that's what the movie was. Because in the end, we all ended up kind of seeing it in the press as it was playing out in real life. And then a year and a half later, it actually came out as a movie. So and then it's always, and then uh, Nick Broomfield does some really interesting. Nick, Nick Broomfield is a documentary director. He did Kurt and Courtney, Biggie and Tupac, Heidi Fleiss okay. uh, documentary. A lot of stuff in the nineties. I've only seen Sarah, Palin. Sarah, yeah. Sarah Palin more recently, but the, yeah, the big ones. And his it's really cool. I think to watch a, a commentary about a doc. Uh, about a documentary, sort of like it took a voiceover on top of a voiceover. So they're just providing more uh, information that they couldn't yeah, do in the edit. Really, inception of information. Yes. <laughs> I, I own the Kurt and Courtney DVD. I don't know if I ever listened to the commentary on it. It's yeah, yeah. All the Kurt Cobain docu, a lot of the, not all, but a lot of the Kurt Cobain documentaries are really good. Yep. But that Kurt and Courtney one. That that will get you paranoid. That is such a good documentary. It will make you paranoid. Did you see this? The, the soaked in bleach. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. is a sort of a continuation of that same uh, point of view. Right. That Kurt Cobain didn't kill himself. Right. The, right. Yeah. That one was written by the. Well, the book was written by the inve private investigator that was hired by Courtney during the missing days. Right. Right. Tom Grant. Tom Grant. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Really interesting. Yeah, really good documentary. Uh, let's go back to questions. Yes. Uh, yoga posers. Have you... <laughs> oh! Wow. You really want to torture him with <laughs> yoga hosers? Uh, it was a Kevin Smith movie starring okay. his daughter and the daughter of um, uh, another big big star. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. Um, Yes, Google. Um, but it, it, it takes place in Canada. It's a big Canada. Ref it, it's, it's Clerks meets 
sort of like an alien invasion type thing. Wow. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'd like to see this. This sounds great. I, you know, I'm sort of familiar with Canada, so I, okay. you know, it'll, it'll be fun to watch. That, um, How familiar are you with Kevin Smith? Johnny Depp. Johnny, Johnny Depp's Depp. daughter. His, his daughter. Wow. 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 I haven't seen that one. No, me neither. And I've seen a few Kevin Smith things. I've, you know, I've seen Mallrats, of course, and Chasing Amy, and um, Clerks, of course, and Dogma. Um, I've not seen Clerks 2, which I, I know. I can't believe it, but I, I have not seen it yet. I have it. Oh, good. I'll I'm let you borrow it. Yes, please. So, and speaking of Kevin Smith and commentaries, I think it's the one where Chasing Amy. Jason Mewes, mm -hmm. who plays, who is it? Jay, and Jay. Jay from Jay, uh, Jay and, and Silent Jay Bob. And Jay is based off of Jason Mewes, so right. it works great. So, but so in the in the commentary, he got so high that he passed out. <laughs> oh no, fooling! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pretty God. sure that's chasing Amy. Pretty wow, sure. that's <laughs> great. Go, I think I only have the VHS for that. I'll have to find a DVD to watch the commentary. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta see that. Yeah, but we we uh, we love Kevin Smith. Actually, so uh, what was it um, when we were doing the blind film critic at the very beginning of the first year? Um, you, Tommy, you tweeted out to Kevin Smith. Yes. You asked him what which one of your films is the best for somebody who's blind, and he responded. Do you remember what he said? No, I forget. He said, uh, "Clerks," because it actually, at all, which by the way, looks like a blind man made the film. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. And so you did a review of it. And we included the tweet and the video and everything. And yeah. you really that's like one of the one of the films you always talk about. I, oh, because I love it. It's so. I mean, again, that's one of those movies that. If you didn't have the, the the video for, I don't care. You would be just compelled instantly because it's just it's that good, and it's it, the story just grabs you so fast, and you can't help but go for the ride. Wow, that's awesome. Any, any other thoughts? Yeah, um, as far as things go with uh, being the blind film critic, I mean, looking back on, I mean, how did you become the blind film critic? What what happened? Well, my mom smoked during pregnancy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I used to tease her about okay. that. Okay, no, yeah. but I, uh -huh. that's just a little sick joke. Don't you mind? Don't you worry about it. Oh, it's, don't look at me like that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I, I used to joke to her about that right to her face. Uh, mom, why did you do that for? What's the matter with you? But um, no, so I, it was funny. I was hanging around with Ben one night, and we were talking about movies. Um, and I can't even remember what movie I'd seen, but I was able to enjoy like 80, 85% of the film. And all the resolution was done with everything except words. And it was very frustrating to me. Um, and so we started talking about it and we got the idea to do movie reviews from my perspective as a blind person. Because, you know, we thought that that's a, a point of view that nobody had really ever heard before. So I thought it might be interesting and fun to do. And that's how it all got started. The first movie we ever did was back in um, April of 20, 2011. And it was Scream 4, the great Scream 4, a theatrical classic. <laughs> it was just happened to be the next film that was coming out that week. <laughs> yep, it was, and it was going to be you know, a big one and a sequel and everything. So we figured what the hell, we'll go see that. We went to the Midnight Movie on Thursday, um, went back to my house, shot the review. At that time, I was working radio, so we finished the review. Um, and Ben dropped me off at the radio station. I went into the traffic for the next few hours. And then took a nap during the day. And poor Ben went home and just edited, edited, editing, you know, and producing and everything. And he put the thing together and what, it was up around noon, one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> the la last question I have for you is for filmmakers or even podcasters, do you have any advice you give for them to think of uh, when they're making a movie? Well, listen, uh, you know, content is king. And if you're writing a story, let's tell the story with words. You know, I understand it's a visual media and all that. I, like, I get that. But, um, you know, I, I, it, it's so frustrating when I watch a movie and I don't even know who some of the characters are because it's so poorly written or nobody addresses each other by name. That's very frustrating to me, you know. Um, you know, when I get to hear characters call each other by name and things and they tell you a little bit of backstory about these people and stuff, you really get to know and fall in love with the characters. Um, and I, you know, I like that a lot. And sound design is very important and it's, it's so great and it helps to move the story as well as music too. You know, so all that stuff really works for me. So that, that would be the advice I give. Just, you know, keep making them that way. Don't worry about all the CGI and all the eye candy. Ben, do you have anything to add to that? I do. I think, um, uh, yeah, obviously content is important, but I think writing the characters, if you're writing, uh, if you're writing, yeah, uh, a scripted, <laughs> you know, a scripted film as opposed to a documentary, I think uh, your characters should all have a different voice point of view. Yeah. Um, some movies, they just, it's like three or four guys that are all the same. 
they, you know, for Tommy, even though they have different uh, sounding voices as, a- as actors, he can't, Tommy can't tell the difference because they're all written from the same point of view. Yeah. There's no difference. Uh, I felt like this is the end. Is that that movie with um, James Franco and Seth Rogen? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a little bit of that. I watched that movie and I was like, three or four of these guys all seemed the same. Some didn't, that's for sure. Some were really funny. And I liked the movie itself, but. Some of the guys just kind of like, it was like they were afraid to go beyond a certain vibe or, or character now, version you of themselves. Now, the documentary. See, the, the, uh, we're calling each other by name. Documentary, it seems like after, uh, when you keep going back between two character, you know, two people when they're telling a story, you kind of stop introducing them because you just have that lower third. Right. So does that run into a problem with knowing who's talking during documentary? Sometimes for me, yeah. But like you know, if I watch it with somebody, for the, you know, they might just read the name as they're talking to me. You know what I mean? Like if I'm watching a movie with Ben, he might go, you know, Phil McCracken, you know, and let me know who's talking for a second, and then I know it's him all the time, right? And I know that the other guy is, you know, whatever. Um, so that helps. But you know, even still, I I still understand. Like. I just saw the, the Lemmy one. Uh, there's several of them, but I saw the one that was on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I saw that about one Lemmy from Motorhead, right? <laughs> and, you know, I, I, it didn't really matter who all those people were because they were all talking. And, like, you know, when Dave Grohl speaks, you know it's Dave Grohl if you're a fan at all. Um, mm-hmm. Right? Because, I mean, and he's just so passionate about rock and roll music and he, he's wonderful. But, you know, some of the, like, the people in the, you know, the record people or whatever they are, I, it does, it's not integral to the story. What they're saying is more important than who they are. I, I want to thank you guys again. Um, again, we have Tommy Anderson and Ben Churchill. You can find them on the Tommy Anderson Experience. Uh, do you have a website you like to direct people to? Or sure. It's yeah. uh, blindfilmcritic.com. Yep, and my site for the documentaries is benchurchill.com. These names, that's not my name, Ben Franklin on his. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the people listening to the audio podcast, uh, and the nameplate says Ben Franklin. <laughs> I, maybe it was going to get struck by lightning. I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Only if course, you have a cake. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we have Mark Monster. CrazyMark.com. And I think we – I didn't hear anything from him. Oh, but I said a few things, but not much. <laughs> the William McCormick from AllAboutWilliam.com. And I'm Scotty Miali, better known as Toden from Toden.com. Uh, you could find this podcast on youtube.com slash or, of course, toadin.com. And it's also on a ton of sites, including Pod Bros. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having <laughs> Thanks. us. Thanks. Okay. Okay.